Welcome back to the Geo Show here on News Channel Nebraska and Columbus News Team. It's been roughly three or four weeks since we've been on the air. But Too long. Brandon joining me as well, Brandon Axmint, and it's good to be back. Yes, it is. We have been taking kind of a break for multiple reasons. One, there's not as much sports going on this summer. We've got Legion Baseball, which we've been covering this year. Um, and then there's some other off-season stuff. they got awards and, and stuff that we're going to be talking about today. Uh, but besides that, it's kind of slow high school sports-wise, local sports-wise, which is what area we cover. So uh, we'll get into that. We're going to talk a few different things as well as because the Olympic sw swim trials – are coming to uh, Omaha. I got some trivia, so we'll nail that. Right. And we'll see if you have maybe a guess or two, and uh, we'll have some fun with it. All right, to start off, uh, Coach Brzezinski, um, and obviously the three-peat three -peat state champ coach, uh, is now getting another honor, and that's Coach of the Year. So you had a chance to talk to him a little bit. Can you tell us a little bit more maybe about the award or kind of what that conversation was like? I can. It's the Nebraska Coaches Association Huddle Coach of the Year Award, where basically you're nominated by your peers, and there's a Coach of the Year for each sport. So Brzezinski, of course, is the soccer Coach mm -hmm. of the Year. Um, Kind of hard to argue who else that would be when he yeah. set a record in Nebraska for doing something no other boys team has done. Of course, the three peach champs with the sh go to Shamrock. So had him come in, talk to him, of course, very honored by the award. He actually won it back in 2014, he said, when he um, won it with the group of seniors to, that just graduated for the first time as sophomores and kind of surprised some people. So he's kind of growing his trophy case, if you will. Of course, very humble as always saying, you know, the kids made it easy for me, which is hard to argue because just a very, very talented group that he had. Um, so he won that award. He said every championship is different. It's something that's very kind of interesting. He played on the Scottish Shamrocks first state championship as a player oh, wow. and has progressed to now bring three as a coach. And yeah. it was kind of interesting talking to him about that whole process. But just another honor and another award as he basically, they capped off their whole season with their banquet on Tuesday and said, you know, it all came full circle. I'm going to miss all those guys. But it was just one wild ride. I'm curious. Uh, and what do you, would you say... And this, uh, again, is was unprecedented coverage that we had of soccer when we were live broadcasting all these games, which was fun for us because it's just another outlet for us to call sports, watch sports. What would you say, besides the state championship, what was your favorite moment throughout this year of, of, of watching, with particularly the SCOTUS team, uh, in honor of Brzezinski's award? Oh, God, let me think. I'm trying to think. None of their games that we really had were close because they were yeah. so good they blew everybody out. I, I want to say my favorite game calling it from a standpoint was the SCOTUS Columbus High District Championship. Yeah. Of course, that's not an ode to Brzezinski there because they didn't come out on top of that yeah. one. That was very exciting, but I guess what you could say is after that took place, they have obviously rebounded, got revenge on Columbus High in the semifinal in a very great match, two to one win. So. Really, the whole state atmosphere was very fun. I guess for me, too, personally, getting a chance to interview not only Coach Brzezinski, but the entire senior class at Morrison Stadium after they won the championship mm -hmm. live on News Channel Nebraska was pretty special for me, and I really enjoyed that. So I guess straying a little bit away from the broadcast aspect, it was still, that that's was cool. unprecedented too, though, to do. Yeah, yeah, that's a cool, that had to have been a cool experience being able to uh, talk to those players. And if anybody got a chance to watch the show, I know I watched it from home, but uh, it was cool to see that set up with the field in the background and talk to the different players, so that was really cool. I would say maybe for me it was maybe that scotus Skyler game because Skyler was a real strong team coming into it. And then you really got to see how dominant SCOTUS was mm -hmm. because they were able to pretty handily beat Skyler, who was a really strong team with Katalu and all those guys. And uh, nothing against Skyler, SCOTUS just, it's like that's how strong they were. It was kind of crazy to watch that take place. Uh, you recently as well came back from Omaha. And Aaron Trout, our producer, is up there at the Omaha World Series. Uh, yes, he did is. you? Do you have any uh, crazy stories? I guess uh, here before we Ooh, take a break. Nothing too wild. I stayed pretty tame in call at the College World Series. Um, it was extremely, extremely hot. Um, as everybody knows, so it was not entirely enjoyable. Um, the cool thing I guess I'd get to say is I got to talk to TCU. I got to go in the locker room and talk to some of the players and coaches. And there's an individual. It's the starting shortstop for TCU, who's a Nebraska native. He graduated from Millard South, um, did Iowa Centralized or Iowa Western Community College for two years, and this is his first year on TCU's team. And of course, him coming back home is a pretty cool story from a Nebraska standpoint. You know, there's no Columbus players at the CWS, but it was fun talking to him. And TCU actually is undefeated still, and they're playing it with a chance to go to the finals on Monday in a double elimination contest if they 
win once they're in. If they lose one, they still have a chance to win again to, to make it to the final. So baseball fans, there's a Nebraska player to cheer for for TCU if you're watching that. Obviously ESPN is quite the hold on that whole operation yes. down there, but what was it like uh, in the media day getting able to go in there and, and talk to the players and stuff like that? You know, it was fun. I mean, everybody, I mean, it's pretty special that the College World Series is held in Omaha. It's yeah. a central location, but you have Miami, you have Florida, Coastal Carolina, then you have UC Santa Barbara, just teams coming in from all over the place, and they're jazzed to be in Omaha. It's a chance for the state of Nebraska to kind of show off what we have to offer, and it's an impressive venue at TD Ameritrade Park and something Nebraska can, can be proud of to have. So to just to get to go in the locker room and talk to the guys, and they're loose, and they're fun, and they're having a good time um, playing in the College World Series, it, it was just pretty lighthearted, you know, no one's too uptight, which again, that was media day before the competition yeah. started, but it was very enjoyable. You don't even have to go to the games. Yeah. You could just hang out like around the area. Last year I went down and it was pretty cool because I ran into one of my old Titans coaches from college. He was uh, just obviously when you're coaching and stuff, you have a little extra time in the summer. He was between uh, going from Wayne up to uh, Southwest Minnesota. Uh, so he was just working that job, which was kind of cool. And so I got to see him. He gave me right in the Gator. So I didn't have as long of a walk. I know sometimes the yeah. parking is uh, just a nightmare. Uh, but it's one of those situations where you don't even have to go to the games. You can just hang out. They got beer gardens everywhere and just enjoy the environment. So that's pretty cool. And best of luck to Aaron Trout as he hangs out. Yes, he does a good time. He's doing a good job. He's helping out with the bottom line down there. Michael Severe and those guys. And so uh, that is a pretty good deal. We are going to be talking A minuses and walleye fishing when we get back. Those stories up next year on the Geo Show. Our economic future depends on tomorrow's skilled workforce. Dream it, do it, and Central Community College Columbus is here to help young adults find careers in advanced manufacturing and related businesses. Visit dreamitdoit.com for more information or tour the Central Community College Columbus campus. Hi, I'm Dee Hansen. I'm the marketing director, and we would like to introduce you to Bank of the Valley. Community-minded, family-centered, measurable relationships. When it comes to your business, agriculture, and personal banking needs, trust Bank of the Valley. We're obviously a locally owned bank, but we're also a bank that's very involved. The most important thing is when you walk in the front door, everybody knows your first name. We are small town banking with all the modern conveniences. Bank of the Valley in Bellwood, David City, Platt Center, and their brand new location in Columbus. In many aspects of life, there are lines between where we work and where we play. But when we cross that line, it's when we become connected to our community. At Columbus Community Hospital, neighbors take care of neighbors. With years of experience and training, caring for everyone, young and old, day or night, the expertise to handle the simple and complex and provide personalized care in your own backyard. It connects us. Columbus Community Hospital, specializing in you. Hi, I'm Joe Steffi. And I'm Michelle Steffi. And we would like to invite you to our new dealership now located on East Highway 30 in Columbus. We are ready to meet all of your automotive needs. So come and see what makes us different. Gene Steffi Ford now on East Highway 30 in Columbus. Welcome to Ernst, one of the largest dealers in Northeast Nebraska. With eight acres of new and pre-owned cars, trucks, and SUVs. At the new Ernst, we're doing things differently. Tired of haggling? Tired of back and forth? Let us show you how easy it can be, and we never charge stock fees. Finding the vehicle you want at the best possible price is our priority. We know you can shop anytime or buy anywhere. Shop Ernst, East Highway 30 in Columbus. In Columbus, see your good neighbor, State Farm agent, Annette Alt, for your insurance and financial needs. Would you like to watch this game from above the crowd? When it comes to finding you a new home, the team at Total Realty have a game plan that'll put you above the crowd. Whether you're buying or selling, they will answer your questions and provide an expert offense to put you in the lead during the whole process. The Total Realty team members are real people living in your same community. They have the same concerns as you do, and one might just live in your own neighborhood. Your Remax team members are the hometown experts with the world of experience. They don't just want to sell you homes, they want to make you happy. At Total Realty today, log on to ColumbusTotalRealty.com or see their full list of homes from the Columbus app, available on iPhone and Android devices. Life is about doing those things we love. And when something happens, you risk that connection to those things. It's about the path you follow to recovery, to return to those things that bring a smile to your face. When it comes to physical, occupational, and speech therapy, rely on the experts who combine compassion with excellence in rehabilitative services. 
The path of personalized, comprehensive, and innovative care to get you where you want to go is at Columbus Community Hospital, specializing in making a difference. Our economic future depends on tomorrow's skilled workforce. Dream it, do it, and Central Community College Columbus is here to help young adults find careers in advanced manufacturing and related businesses. Visit dreamitdoit.com for more information or tour the Central Community College Columbus campus. Welcome back to the GO Show here on News Channel Nebraska and Columbus News Team. Brandon Axmit alongside me. And you did a lot of talking in the first <laughs> segment, but that won't change too much here because I got some questions for you Good. shortly. But anyways, uh, before we get going, we got to do, I said we, we have Olympic swim trivia. Um, so we'll get back to this at the end of this segment. We'll see if you have an answer and then we'll go into a new one. So I want you to decide to think about this while we talk. All right, all right. When was swimming introduced into the Olympics? What year? Okay, I'll so, start thinking. So we'll go on and we'll multitask. So right now, uh, a couple of Columbus anglers competed in a big time fishing competition and they got some more stuff coming down the line. Uh, but you did the story on this and uh, they won a walleye fishing tournament and Mike Worth and James Paul the second won the Big Mac Shut Up and Fish Tournament, which is an awesome name uh, for a fishing <laughs> tournament. First off, you fish very much. Actually, I've, not, I've not walleye fished a ton per se, but I know you have, or you did some of that with your grandpa, right? Yes, that is a good memory. I was telling Mr. Worth, actually, when I was talking to him on the phone, it was bringing back great memories. My parents, or my grandparents, excuse me, had a cabin up at Leech Lake in Minnesota about nine hours from here. And every summer, um, when I was pretty much in elementary school and preschool through fifth grade, I would go up, make the road trip with my dad and my uncle. We'd fish for two weeks on the lake, catch the fish right out of the lake, and have fish fries pretty much every night. And I don't know if you ever had walleye, but it's great, great eating. So I, I do have fond memories of doing walleye fishing. Um, and talking about how to catch the walleye with Mr. Worth. He used night crawlers in this p specific competition, which is the only thing we use. Night crawlers is the best way to catch walleye. Right. So it was good to kind of reminisce and talk about some walleye fishing because it's been about 10 years since I've done it. But if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Absolutely right. I suppose my fishing background in college at least, was Pilger Pond, which mm -hmm. is right outside, uh, just south of Pilger. And I went to school at Wayne State College for my last three years. And so me and uh, a couple other players would go down and just take some uh, beverages with us and then just catfish <laughs> forever. We'd, yeah, go down, really? we'd go down and, and, and try and fish for crappie, but it was basically all bluegill. And mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't even know if there was any crappie in that lake. <laughs> we attempted though, so uh, that was pretty much it. And then drive back at like two in the morning and it's a great time. And then go to bed. Yeah. And then it was just the fishing <laughs> for the night. But but these guys have obviously got a lot more experience than either of us. Yes. Because they are, as I might say, uh, off camera squatting up on the <laughs> uh, on the fishing ranks. So uh, I guess you got a chance to talk to them a little bit. Can you tell me a little bit about and inform people maybe where, where they're at, where they're headed? Yes. Well, basically, it's them two. And there was another Columbus pair that got sixth. Um, I, well, t drawing a blank on their names right now, I think Honky is one of their names at the yeah. bottom of the paragraph. And I might have thrown out the other sheet. Let me look. We can look that We're up. scrambling. It's McGannon and Honky are their last names, but they got sixth in this tournament. So they okay. kind of, I think the way he was explaining it, they're sponsored by the same team, which is, if you can see it on their Nitro. shirt. Nitro. Nitro, like I think it's Team Walleye Angler or something. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Something crazy. Walleye Nation. Team there Walleye Nation. So actually, they won this and they got $6,000 cash prize for first, which isn't bad yeah. for fishing, um, but they're on this circuit. There's two circuits for walleye fishing in Nebraska, and these regional and national tournaments, which they've qualified for now, are put on by Cabela's, where they're going to lakes in Missouri or, or surrounding areas where they're basically competing against the best of the best. Um, and this one was at McConaughey. This one was at Lake McConaughey. Um, which a lot of people, I assume, are familiar with. Yes. In the area, so. And they, um, their two-day total was 33 pounds for 10 fish, which isn't bad. He had a 25-incher and a 24-incher, which isn't terrible. Uh, yeah. But looking at the Nebraska Walleye Association top six standings, actually McGannon and Hunky from Columbus, who got sixth in this one, are in third over the whole circuit, okay. which has four different competitions, and Worth and Paul are in sixth. Um, and fishing is one of those things, too, where you're not going to, you know, there is a little bit of luck, obviously, factored into it. Do you find the right spot? Maybe you know some lakes better than others. Exactly. And so uh, there is that factor, obviously, and they rose on top on this one. But They did. And I asked Worth, I said, you know, what makes a difference between a pro and an amateur besides, obviously, pros are doing it all the time. Is there different tricks? Do they just know more things? And he said the biggest thing is, you know, when you're a pro, you're just familiar with mm -hmm. 
these random bodies of water where these tournaments might be, it, as opposed to an amateur, you may be going somewhere where you've never fished before. He said, we went to the, the Bay of Green Bay, and it's the south end is 30 miles by 75 miles, and yeah. if you've never fished there before, you're how just you, trying to find a way to gonna catch, get, to catch yeah. the walleye. So it was interesting to get his perspective, but it's pretty cool to see four Columbus guys total doing a good job doing some walleye fishing and, and representing the area, if you will. And that's pretty cool, too, that... Uh, there's just these odd sports and stuff. Now they got like the horseshoe tournament is coming up this weekend, and they got like the state champions participating in that. It's going to be in Pawnee Park, uh, but that's something you wouldn't really think about either, unless you're really involved in like horseshoe. So it's pretty cool that you got people in the area that are doing stuff outside of uh, you know the normal sports coverage that mm -hmm. we do, which for the most part is just high school organized yeah. MSA sports, so that's pretty sweet. Uh, another exciting thing, and, and you kind of went the story on this, Logan Pabin and Emily Hausman, just kind of want to mention this quick, uh, both recognized Heart of American Athletic Conference as scholar athletes. Uh, they both, or to be on, you gotta be on a varsity team, achieve a 3.40 GPA or higher. Um, and Hausman is from Columbus High and Pabin Lakeview. He's got a uh, younger brother that's still in school and uh, is doing pretty did pretty well in golf this last season so uh exciting for them and uh not in paving got a 4.0 gpa yeah i have never achieved a 4.0 gpa um so hats off to those two yes for, uh for those scholars. have you ever had the 4.0 not to put you on blast here i have only in high school and that was because parents were giving a monetary reward to do so so hey, I, I had that motivation. extra motivation to do it. <laughs> I definitely didn't touch that in <laughs> high school. I didn't have bad, I had decent grades in right. college, in high school, but uh, the grades are actually better in college. I was not as motivated. <laughs> the, the, the incentives were there and it just wasn't quite enough motivation. I kept the grades up high enough to play hey. sports and then got a little more motivated in college. So, all right, so before we go to break here, the question was, what year was swimming introduced into the Olympics? Do you have a guess? I have a guess. I wondered if I could ask you a question that would help me look, narrow my guess. Let's, it, let's, let me see what the question is. Pre or post-1900? Can you give me that? It's pre-1900. Pre-1900. Oh, okay. Because I was going to say early 1900s, but I'm going to have to say now, 1882. You're actually not, that's not t such a terrible guess. Unfortunately for you, it was right on the line. It was 1896. Oh. Swimming was introduced in the Olympics in 1896. All right, we're going to do one more before we go to break, and we'll, we'll check it out uh, when we come back. Women first swam competitively at which Olympic Games? No it multiple choice? No multiple choice. Ooh. I will tell you it took place in Stockholm, Sweden. I would not have known the answer oh. to this if I did not have it right in front of me. We are going to be talking... A little bit of this trivia and some other stuff when we get back here on the Geo Show. And David City Baseball. Let's chat David City Baseball. Yes, we'll talk it. about that Legion Baseball when we get back here on the Geo Show News Channel, Nebraska. Hi, I'm Dee Hansen. I'm the marketing director, and we would like to introduce you to Bank of the Valley. Community-minded, family-centered, measurable relationships. When it comes to your business, agriculture, and personal banking needs, trust Bank of the Valley. We're obviously a locally owned bank, but we're also a bank that's very involved. The most important thing is when you walk in the front door, everybody knows your first name. We are small town banking with all the modern conveniences. Bank of the Valley in Bellwood, David City, Platt Center, and their brand new location in Columbus. Life is about doing those things we love. And when something happens, you risk that connection to those things. It's about the path you follow to recovery, to return to those things that bring a smile to your face. When it comes to physical, occupational, and speech therapy, rely on the experts who combine compassion with excellence in rehabilitative services. The path of personalized, comprehensive, and innovative care to get you where you want to go is at Columbus Community Hospital, specializing in making a difference. Our economic future depends on tomorrow's skilled workforce. Dream it, do it, and Central Community College Columbus is here to help young adults find careers in advanced manufacturing and related businesses. Visit dreamitdoit.com for more information or tour the Central Community College Columbus campus. Welcome to Ernst, one of the largest dealers in Northeast Nebraska. With eight acres of new and pre-owned cars, trucks, and SUVs. At the new Ernst, we're doing things differently. Tired of haggling? Tired of back and forth? Let us show you how easy it can be. And we never charge stock fees. Finding the vehicle you want at the best possible price is our priority. We know you can shop anytime 
or buy anywhere. Shop Ernst, East Highway 30 in Columbus. Hi, I'm Joe Steffi. And I'm Michelle Steffi. And we would like to invite you to our new dealership now located on East Highway 30 in Columbus. We are ready to meet all of your automotive needs. So come and see what makes us different. Gene Steffi Ford now on East Highway 30 in Columbus. Would you like to watch this game from above the crowd? When it comes to finding you a new home, the team at Total Realty have a game plan that'll put you above the crowd. Whether you're buying or selling, they will answer your questions and provide an expert offense to put you in the lead during the whole process. The Total Realty team members are real people living in your same community. They have the same concerns as you do, and one might just live in your own neighborhood. Your Remax team members are the hometown experts with the world of experience. They don't just want to sell you homes, they want to make you happy. At Total Realty today, log on to ColumbusTotalRealty.com or see their full list of homes from the Columbus app, available on iPhone and Android devices. In many aspects of life, there are lines between where we work and where we play. But when we cross that line, it's when we become connected to our community. At Columbus Community Hospital, neighbors take care of neighbors. With years of experience and training, caring for everyone, young and old, day or night, the expertise to handle the simple and complex and provide personalized care in your own backyard. It connects us. Columbus Community Hospital, specializing in you. Three, two. Welcome back to the Geo Show here on News Channel, Nebraska and Columbus News Team. Brandon Axmit. Beside me, I'm Grant Otten. And uh, happy to be back after like four, three, four weeks of a hiatus. Feels good. Feels right. It feels right. good. It was kind of nice to take a break for a little bit. We've been doing it all sports season long and it's been busy and it's going to get even more hectic when this yes. fall comes around. No official schedules out yet, but Stay basically tuned. we're going to be covering a lot of sports in the fall live broadcast. So definitely stay tuned for that. Multiple sports, but a lot of them. We continue to do more un and unprecedented things. Yeah. We continue to outdo ourselves. And it is sometimes tiring, but always fun. That is for sure. All right, so the question before the break. Women first swam competitively at which Olympic Games it took place in Stockholm, Sweden? Okay. I'm going to say it's pre-1950. Tell me if I'm right. That's correct. Okay. I'm going to say it's in the 1930s. But now I don't know the divisions of four. Which Okay, wait. So there was, 80, so there was a 96. I'll tell you this. It ends in a, it ends in a even number. Okay. That is either um, two or six. Let's do two. So you're going to say 1932? Yes. Unfortunately, it was 1912 oh. Oh. in regards to... So if you guessed 1912, Dang. or even if you guessed it all, the answer is 1912. <laughs> Women first swam competitively at the 1912 Olympic Games in Stockholm, Sweden. All right, we'll do one more that we'll answer here before the uh, end of the show. Diving was introduced to the Olympics in what year? Can you tell me if it's after swimming? Oh, that, I guess that's women's swimming. Well, we'll answer it at the end of the show. Okay, okay. So you have a little time to think about it. It is. It was introduced post swimming. Post swimming. Okay. I'm not going to give it. Not the women. I don't know about the women's. Or okay. I'm not going to say whether the women's or not. I knew. I know. Obviously, <laughs> with those before or after, but I won't say which one. That'll be part of the ass. All right. Let's talk a little David City baseball. Let's do it. So, we went to uh, David City's field, Burns Field, which is a sweet facility and very exciting, mm -hmm. um, especially for the town of David City. It's got the four fields, um, and got a nice parking area. The walk up is pretty sweet when you get to walk up and you got baseball going, baseball, softball, t-ball, whatever it is going on all sides is really cool. And so uh, it's just really cool. So if you get a chance, maybe go out and watch a game or just go check out their facility. But uh, the Lakeview David City game was a crazy one. Yes, um, it was. They played. We'll say this before we go in. They played Shelby Osceola, which is a right, which is a rival game for them. David City won eight nothing. Uh, they kind of got the bats going. They got three in the three in the third, four in the um, fifth, or four in the fourth, and uh, they run ruled them. Got eight zero win, but that didn't happen in the Lakeview game, and that's something that we were thinking was going to happen in the Lakeview game because the Lakeview came out really hot uh, with. One run in the first inning, six in the second, five in the third, and that's when things kind of turned. What was maybe, out of the couple games that we've seen from David City for you, what is maybe the thing that sticks out to you the most of why they're playing so well right now? And again, this is Legion ball. You know, the atmosphere is a little bit different, but it's still kind of fun to talk this when we talk about these players. Well, they're 11-2 and two now, and I think from what we've seen, they just got 
batters. They put the ball in play, and that's half the battle in baseball mm -hmm. is giving yourself a chance. And, I mean, when you put up 19 runs like we saw when they took on Lakeview, more times than not, you're probably going to win a baseball game. Yeah. So that's the one thing that I think, I mean, a lot of times they were patient at the plate. They got a lot of walks, but they just got a lot of hits. They had 10 of them, and they didn't make a lot of errors. They started out shaky, but yeah. they, they regrouped, which sometimes you don't see in high school kids. You know, they were down 10 runs at one point. It was 12-2, to two, Lakeview on top. And then they rallied back to win. So that's a testament to them and kind of the, the grit, I guess, if you will, that they were able to refocus and come back on top. Well, and you look at uh, the pitching for the night was a big question mark going in. You talked to Lakeview's coach um, and, and knew that they weren't throwing their best guy out there. I mean, David said he didn't have their strongest pitcher out there either. White um, started off for them. They rotated uh, quickly and then eventually got their way to J Joe Reimers. And Gus Reimers was the second one in there, correct? Did they even I think it went. Was? I think it went Gus then Joe. Yep, White Gus Joe. Yeah. Correctly, and and so that was a quick turnaround, and uh, they took um, Lakeview did the same thing. They changed. They ended up putting Berger in uh, Berger Dawson, and so uh, it, it was interesting. And that maybe not was not maybe the best move for them. They were pitching all right, and they changed up, and they kind of went downhill. So that was kind of an interesting thing. But Lakeview was up by ten points or 10 runs at one point, mm -hmm. and then to give up eight runs in the, at a count because I'm not good at math, in the sixth <laughs> inning, but then for the for Lakeview to come back and, and get four in the seventh was, was pretty crazy too, but that just shows you uh, how resilient these two teams are, and that was a long game, that was three hours. Yes, it was. Uh, but that was, it was fun, it was fun to watch, and that was... You have to put you had to put highlights together, and you just kind of like said you had to, you just kind of picked and chose hits because there were so many of them. Yeah, when you have twenty hits between the two teams and thirty five yeah. runs scored, it's <laughs> it's pretty crazy. You're going to be doc yeah doing a documentary. So yeah. I mean, <laughs> it turned out all right. I mean, Dakota Pro Rock, you mentioned it, who pitched very well to start off for Lakeview. Um, had that home run in the mm -hmm. seventh inning, which kind of came out of nowhere. You're not yeah. expecting the nine hole to blast one over the left yeah. field fence, but then we're like. Holy cow! Is are, like, are they gonna come back now after tra they were trailing, trailing what seven runs in the seven runs? Yeah, and then they got four. So it seemed fitting. It was a wild, they, wild what, game. It seemed like the game that would have made sen more sense right. if they would have came back and tied it instant into the seventh thing. But that yeah, was pretty crazy. And I think part of that change when you take Pro Rock out and you put Dawson in that uh, you see David City switch pitchers three times, then maybe you think you don't want. You don't want Pro Rock to out throw himself and start mm -hmm. giving up some hits. He gave up uh, four hits there in that uh, third inning, or four runs. Dawson comes in, five. He did get zero in that uh, fifth inning, and so that was kind of like maybe a sign of hope for Lakeview because at that point they still had the lead by one run, uh, but then that eight runs yeah. just kind of just stole things away. <laughs> so I don't know. When, you, when we talk about Legion baseball, um, this was something that we kind of just as a – group as a broadcast kind of as far as broadcast goes it was kind of last minute hey let's do this it'd be fun to do some baseball what's the biggest thing that you may be surprised to you covering the games to me i think it's how fun it is to call i was about to say the exact same thing i was a little bit worried not that baseball isn't fun but sometimes it's slow moving and i was a little bit worried about hey like what are we gonna be able to talk about all this time but it, it moves fast like all the things you have to think about you're just constantly saying you know the count the outs who's up mm -hmm. like it was amazing for never calling baseball before how quickly it goes and how entertained and I guess present I yeah. you, you have to remain. You know, it's relaxing to call, but it's yeah. still you're thinking about a lot of different things. And we've watched the sport before. You know, mm -hmm. I've watched it um, growing up and playing it when we were younger, but calling it's a whole different thing. And it, it is definitely uh, it's a blast calling. And the other thing when you talk about it too, when you talk about things to talk about, is the resources that are available for Legion baseball. I mean, it's just not yes. there. You know, there's not the presence online. It's not st statistics. It's not. You know, it's organized to an extent, but there's only so much that goes into it as far as stat keeping. There's not as much of a demand by media across the state, which reasonably, you know, in a sense, it's really club ball. It's a chance for right. these guys to just continue playing throughout the summer. Uh, but I was curious about that, too. It was, uh, but it was a lot of fun. I had a blast. Yeah. I've had a blast so far. I can't wait to keep doing it. All right, before we head out here, let's see if we can get uh, a guess on this, uh, on this question. When was diving introduced into the Olympics. It was after swimming was introduced. 1904. That's correct. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> yes. I did that the is correct. It was eight years after the swimming, so I wouldn't have been able to do it if you hadn't given me that tip. Oh, 
You did it well. 1904 yes. is the answer. Brain is one for three, which is more than I would have been if I had to get in this situation because those were not easy questions. Yeah, take but it. It was good. You, glad to have, have you back, dude. It's Feels good. Yes. Cool. Very All good. right.